Yeah. Okay. So recording has started. Yeah. So good morning, one and all present over here. Uh, respect, respected principal of our college, Dr. Jirji Khan, uh, head of the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Dr. Praveen Purduke. Today's guest speaker, uh, Mr. Vedant Manade Madane, who is also a project associate, uh, a technical development team, MKCL. Mr. Juhe Parker, uh, who is program manager, MKCL, he also joined with us. Uh, Mr. Mayur, uh, who helped me to coordinate this webinar. So I welcome uh, all of them. Uh, and I thank Mayur to coordinate, uh, to make this webinar uh, happen. Also, I welcome all faculty members of Mechanical Engineering Department and my dear student. So once again, I welcome you all for this webinar on artificial intelligence. Before starting, I would like to brief you about uh, the program sequence. I myself uh, promote Sahare, Assistant Professor Mechanical yeah, Engineering Department, yeah. hosting this event. Yeah. After my introduction, after my introduction, our head of the department will address, followed by our honorable principal sir's presidential remark. Then our webinar speaker, uh, Mr. Vedant, will continue his presentation for nearly 45 minutes. And after that, Mr. Juhe Parker, Program Manager MKCL, will give a short presentation on MKCL's product offering DNX for 15 minutes. After that, question and answer session will conduct it. And lastly, vote of thanks. So I hope all of you will join with us and will stay up till end of the program. So let's start the program. So artificial intelligence, or we can also popularly known as AI. It is the simulation of human intelligence processes by machines, especially computer systems. Spe specific applications of AI include expert systems, natural language processing, speech recognition, machine vision, voice recognition software, such as the most famous Apple Siri, Amazon's Alexa, and Google Docs voice typing. Uh, using virtual filters on our faces uh, when taking pictures, these also exist. Uh, from our phone, chase playing computers to self-driving are some popular examples of AI. I you know mechanical engineers with skills would be required to work on software which can handle data provided by sensors in components of power plant, production facility, or consumer products. Uh, AI, especially machine learning, ML, and deep learning (DL) algorithms, is becoming an important tool in the field of material and mechanical engineering attributed to its power to predict material properties, design new materials, and discover new mechanisms beyond intuitions. So to focus more on today's webinar, I now request our head of department, Mechanical Engineering, Dr. Praveen Purduke, sir, to address us. Thank you, Professor Pramod. Uh, Honorable Principal RCRT, uh, Dr. Jhed Khan, uh, guest speaker of today, uh, Honorable Vedant Madne, who is a project associate at uh, um, MKCL, uh, well known uh, for its MSCIT course, which uh, revolutionized uh, whole uh, computer uh, knowledge, uh, which is being passed to the students. Uh, the faculty members present over here and the students. It gives me immense pleasure to hold such a seminar. This is the second in a row, uh, the uh, webinars we have been organizing this semester. As, as rightly told by uh, Professor Pramod, yes, artificial intelligence is nothing but it is a simulation of the uh, the intelligence of the, uh, our, the human beings, and uh, that through uh, to the uh, with the help of the machines. And uh, mechanical engineering is also going to uh, uh, change the its course, change in near future. And I hope that we will find applications uh, in uh, the driverless cars which uh, uh, have been already operating by tesla then uh, manufacturing we have got uh, number of options the transportations we have number of uh, applications so here in the department we every time want our student to get a breast of the technologies new technologies recent developments which are happening all over the world and uh, therefore we have arranged this. I hope that my students will get, get insights and good takeoffs from this program. So, dear students, listen carefully, interact, ask questions, deepen your knowledge, and just uh, use it for the future development of self. Thank you. Over to uh, Professor Pramod. 
thank you sir thank you for your thoughts and you always motivate us to go for new things and the reason why we arrange this webinar to our students to get knowledge of new technologies thank you pravin sir uh, now i request uh, our honorable research and technology dr jhj khan sir to guide us my esteemed colleague and uh, i am audible if i am audible yes. Yes, yeah, yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Pramod, uh, Professor and Head, and my colleague, uh, Head of the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Dr. Praveen Porduke, uh, the guest speaker, uh, Mr. Vedant Madne, Mr. Zohe Parker, uh, Mr. Mayur, um, Mr. Sahare, all the honorable faculty members of the Department of Mechanical Engineering, the participants, and all my dear students. Uh, well i i feel that there is nothing uh, you know left as far as this uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, which now i should introduce to the people the way this particular topic this particular technology uh, has taken a leap uh, during last 5 years is something which everybody is seeing with a uh, with a whisper everybody is observing how this is making the lives change in our uh, in our own uh, you know in everybody's life in our home and everywhere this is making a huge life changes in our in, in our system uh, just two examples that i would like to pass on here is that if we look at the even the engineering courses which are there now the days have gone when they, it has to be it used to be btech mechanical engineering or civil engineering and electrical engineering you can see that now there is a huge demand all over the country not only just the country but across the world uh, as far as the engineering courses in all these artificial intelligence machine learning the data science and all these things are there and they have taken the you know the topmost position as far as the interest of the students are concerned that's that speaks of the gravity you know that speaks of uh, the 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 space that has been taken over by this uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning in modern technologies and as far as you know as far as spread is concerned as far as tentacles are concerned it has spread its tentacles to almost everything that ever we visualize whether it's a concept uh, whether it is uh, any control system or whether it is any automation and nowadays everything is gradually falling uh, with the application of artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, in fact uh, just uh, uh, half an hour or one hour back Uh, when dr pravin porduke visited me i was sitting with one of my phd scholars and we have worked on the battery management system uh, he was just telling me that uh, we are on the way to get a very good amount uh, from niti ayog for a start up project in that work area and then i was discussing with him that how far there is a possibility of applying you know this artificial intelligence concept to that and that is our next step we have already designed a battery management system which has Uh, given a wonderful results as far as all our uh, you know um, uh, comparisons were concerned so now we are on the way to applying this artificial intelligence and that already has been approved by the niti ayo and we are going to hopefully uh, another 6 months we are going to get a, a a very good project from the government of india so that is that i am wanting to say what i wanting to tell you is that if you have got anything any 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 idea in your brain whether it is a concept i am again repeating it whether it's a concept whether you are a small control you are thinking of whether it is a small automation that you are thought of which is different from from whatever is existing then you can have these revolutionary results by just application of these ai and ml techniques you try to understand this this technology is totally going to change the way you are getting the results presently and therefore i am of the very uh, you know concerned opinion i am of the very firm opinion that whether he is a mechanical engineer or electrical engineer or computer science or anything any any engineer he must understand the concepts of artificial intelligence and ml it is a must i am not saying that it's optional i am never i am never saying that it's optional and therefore even the students who are listening to me i am giving you an advice i am giving you a suggestion that whenever you get an opportunity to get all these subjects in your curriculum as a part of electives you must opt it you must opt it there may be few you know problems for you in understanding the things 
But the thing is that after four years, when you'll be passing out from this institution, you'll be understanding the importance of learning these particular subjects. In BTEC, uh, this um, uh, our uh, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Technology University, uh, you know, as per, as per all these uh, its procedures, statute and all that, you have got the provision of even acquiring the minor degree uh, with computer science and all that, where you can pick up the subjects like artificial intelligence and machine learning. So it is going to provide you a huge opportunity, you know, huge opportunity. Therefore, you must go for that. Therefore, once again, with all these suggestions to all my dear students, I hope that you are going to concentrate on this webinar, which really can change your future, I am telling you. Which really can, if, if I want to underline it, a single sentence, what I believe is that this single webinar has got the potential to change the future of many of the students who are really going to listen it very carefully. I hope that the entire delivery and presentation is going to be really uh, useful and utility oriented for all the participants who are there. And uh, once again, uh, I wish to put on record my deep sense of appreciation uh, to the Department of Mechanical Engineering under the dynamic leadership of Dr. Praveen Porduke, uh, who has not, uh, you know, uh, kept any stone unturned in bringing the good facilities and good programs for the students. Now it is up to you, my dear students, to be benefited from all these uh, the programs, the events, the webinars which are being brought to you. Thank you so much and God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for your kind words. Uh, we are really Yay. grateful that uh, you grace our program by your presence and sharing your thoughts. So thank you very much, sir. Uh, now I uh, request uh, Mr. Vedant Madani, who is Project Associate, Technical Development Team, and he's working uh, for Artificial Intelligence from last three years in MKCL. So I request Vedant to start your presentation. Now I hand over the proceedings to Mr. Vedant. Thank you, sir, uh, for introducing me. I am Vedant Madani. So uh, is English comfortable to all? You can carry on. Mr. Vedant, you can carry on. In between, you can use uh, Hindi or Marathi. Thank you, sir. Or students will like it. Huh? This will be a mix of that. Huh? Yes, sir. Uh, so, first of all, what is AI? What is ML? So, what is the difference? We will start from the difference. These two are used interchangeably, these two words. Basically, AI is something when you see it, you know, like AI has been implemented here. It produces surprise, maybe wonder. So machine learning is the process of teaching the computer how to do tasks intelligently. Now, so that's why these two are very much related, but they are inside one another. If you draw a Venn diagram, so uh, ML will be just one aspect of AI. There are other things where you can use AI, which are not machine learning based. So for example, there are simply rule based. You specify a rule, if this happens, then do that. That is the simplest form. That can also come under AI, but that won't be machine learning because that is the rule based approach. Now, there are many subfields there is and there is a lot of overlap so uh, do not think that uh, i am from mechanical so why should i study this or uh, there is no scope for me here i will tell you about myself i am not from computer or it background i am from telecom uh, graduate i am a telecom graduate but one day there was such a seminar in my college also which uh, kindled my curiosity to start studying and uh, do a project in my final year in this on these topics. So first uh, we will see these are the dictionary definitions basically. What is AI? That it is a branch of computer science. Sure, it is uh, related to computer science, but uh, that should uh, not uh, create fear in you that this is not for me. What you have to do is find the overlaps. So uh, you have to find overlap. So I am from this branch. So uh, where is it, where this concept is similar, which concepts are overlapping that you have to do and that you will be able to do when you uh, 
have some curiosity and you start on your own so th these are the two dictionary definitions that is uh, making the machine uh, generally a computer to imitate some intelligent human behavior so uh, in data mining it is about generating insights business insights from raw data which will take a human uh, many hours or may not be possible for him to do that at all then nlp is natural language processing it means the sms language we use uh, when communicating with each other there is some data in that also so how can we recognize this one example is you talk you write a message to your bank that send so and so amount to so and so person on such and such a date so how that is interpreted how to make that computer understand and carry out that transactions then this is the artificial neural networks which make many of these things possible so self driving cars a neural network has been trained which recognizes whether an obstacle is there or the road is clear then again it is classified so this is there is supervised that means human supervision is there while making the computer learn and there is unsupervised unsupervised means you run the computer and you those algorithms do the supervision for you now we are going we will see soon by uh, random forest trees those are so those are unsupervised so these classifications help us to see whether uh, how fast the model learns whether humans are required to constantly tune the parameters provide uh, input provide cleaning of the data before it is inputted into the model or not then robotic process automation is another field this you can see in assembly lines when the car is being made a computer is running that uh, arm which is fitting the door of the car so even if the car moves a little forward the computer automatically adjusts its uh, force so that the door is fitted properly then this voice recognition sir gave an example about siri these are the production level apps that do voice recognition but there is also many things many libraries available those are free those are open source you can also view the code you can edit it to implement on a small scale in your own projects suppose you have some uh, uh, you are making a remote control car so you have to ask yourself can i uh, implement it in such a way that i can give it voice commands and it will go forward come back maybe not a full fledged driving car but on a remote control device can you implement it these are the questions you, which you have to ask yourself now this expert systems is again connected to data mining see how this all is interconnected so expert systems are there uh, again which provide business insights so you want to see if a market is feasible or not so you make a prototype you introduce it then there is some risk that the prototype will fail this expert systems bypass most of the risk by using feeding the data which is already available so business risk can be reduced this is uh, the final test uh, whether something is ai or not so there is one person here he is not knowing whether he is interacting with a computer or a real person on the other side so if the person a suppose you say that you are interacting with a human being but it actually turns out to be an ai system or a computer then it means that that ai has passed the turing test so that is a basic turing test it is very old this turing test it is more than 60 years old but still it is considered as a gold standard to see if some ai is uh, that advanced or not so this is actually very old but what happens in, uh, in recent years in the past 20, 20 years this you can see this 1920 actually people have been trying and failing sometimes one or two people succeed in trying to generate insights and they are doing at college level research level university levels phd programs but not those results were not being able to be reproduced in the industry some industry applications were not being able to be found for them 
so the simplest uh, artificial intelligence network is called as a perceptron it is a very simplest one which you can find so that was developed in these years but what happened during the last five years until then the development suddenly slowed because the product results were not being available so that is called as the ai winter because no new developments were happening but what happened suddenly we had high performance chips computing which were actually developed for playing games so this was not the ai was not the application for developing this nvidia gpus gpus means graphical processing units they were developed for playing playing high performance games 3d games but a side effect was some scientists found out that they can actually use these processors and tinker with them and make tpus tpus means tensor processing units so tensor is nothing but a multi dimensional array so these tensors can be easily processed using these gpus so that gave sudden impetence suddenly new findings were being made using this uh, advanced hardware and here the uh, this small movement it spread across the world and uh, major breakthroughs were being made due after 2015 and 2016 transformer technology was used so so much gpus they were uh, using for training the model and a uh, new on the software side also new transformer technology was used which uh, made uh, training those models affordable so now you can also train it on a, on your laptop and uh, try try it on some data set and try to get some results it becomes so much accessible so now uh, like this generations are divided first generation second generation third generation of ai so latest now we are over here that so many decision making tasks which have risk which have uh, so much uh, resources that have to be utilized to reach a conclusion now this can be done on an affordable basis using th this technology so risk management basic compliance that kyc uh, you do that or compliance with the government other uh, ta uh, compliance tasks generating insights uh, from business data then this is self service means many of the things for which you had to visit a person always sometimes that person is on the lunch break so your task remains like that for weeks many of these things you can do without uh, a person uh, human holding you by so these were the major generations over which ai has developed to come to this point now you will see some supervised approaches last uh, in the last one slide i told you about the general bifurcation is supervised and unsupervised whether human intervention human supervision is required or not so the examples these are the three main examples of supervised approaches regression uh, so you must have studied this in maths also this is the same regression so there are multiple types of regression lasso regression then the ridge regression and the most familiar we are uh, we are with is the simple regression why was in the 18th century why was this techno technique of calculation developed so uh, it was developed to uh, one scientist took curiosity what is what will be the height of a person so it was found that regresses to the mean mean of whom mean height of the mother and father so over time given enough taken enough samples the height of a person can be predicted to be the mean of the heights of the mother and father so this has very wide applications credit risk means if you take out a loan what is the chance that you will not pay back the loan the reason can be anything but from the company or the bank's per perspective uh, can it predict reliably that if i am giving you a loan you will pay it back on time that is called as credit risk one minus credit risk is the credit default so and uh, some are genuine reasons he cannot actually pay it back but some reasons are that uh, the person has malicious intent he is defrauding the crediting that is company that is the bank can we predict that 
so these were the immediate applications we can use various supervised approaches like what is the age of the person gender of the person it is actually found that women actually pay back have a greater reliability in paying back the loans than men this is aggregate so i'm not saying one person or another or aggregate when you add up all the data points this is the general trend that is found so then this is not a one time you set it and you forget oh okay, yeah chalu hai now i can uh, handle it to the bank handle the system to the bank and go home no new as new data is generated you have to train the model on again and again and what is refitting refitting is the same as in mechanical so you take up apart all the parts and refit the machine again so same way you have to take out uh, parts of the model add the new data and fit the model again now bucket based uh, decision trees these are the simple here you can see simple yes no decision tree this is for the titanic data set so what you are doing is taking the gender of the person if male or female then what is the probability what is the chance that he survived the titanic sinking then you check the age if the age is greater than 9.5 years what is the probability here you can see it is 61% probability that if that person is male and he is greater than 9.5 years that he must have died the sinking of the ship so then again you go on this is called as a decision tree this is a binary tree only two options are there yes or no survived or died but such times here and you can see okay that person uh, is greater than 10 years old maybe he must have survived you can say that but it is not always so clear cut that time you don't know whether the yes is going to be the true or no or they can be buckets you create so 0 to 10 years will fall in one bucket 10 to 20 in another bucket 10 to uh, 22 13 another bucket so when you do such bucketing that is uh, buckets to categorize then you can use histogram histogram for plotting because the data is continuous otherwise you can use box plots if the data is discontinuous means there are breaks between the buckets then you have to use box plot this is one application of decision tree so uh, when you cannot predict directly on a decision tree you aggregate n number of decision trees and create a random forest so these are very uh, uh, difficult words sometimes the mathematicians statisticians use but we have to see in our own understanding that nothing uh, uh, random forest is just a collection of such decision trees another such word is ann artificial neural network so neural networks it is not really our like our the neural networks in our brain but it is inspired by the neural network so the name is given as neural network basically there is an input layer now this is a fully connected you can see each input layer is connected to one hidden layer like this there can be n number of hidden layers and it can be used to predict Uh, output in the output layer now if only two outputs are predicted then it is a binary classification problem otherwise if you have to group uh, some uh, new input is available and you have to group it whether it falls in group 1 2 or 3 then it is a classification problem so like this when you receive a problem and when you, when you are able to classify the problem you can immediately find out how other people have solved this problem and it will make it that much easier for you to solve your unique problems now we will see about recurrent neural networks here see simple word is there recurrent means it recurs after every hidden layer that neural network reoccurs these are the various applications so first by application you can start guessing that okay this is the application this net neural network must have been used here so when you have image you feed the image and sometimes you check whether you are using facebook or instagram you have your net off 
and uh, there is an alternate text shown where the photo must have been there it says two people uh, nature is the background talking so that then you can guess rnn was used to create that caption that was for image captioning then auto completion features are there that uses actually lstm but lstm is nothing but an advanced form of recurrent neural network you see here how one layer is built on top of the other then sentences completion when you type on your phone you type one word and it predicts the next word which you might want to type so how that is done that is done using recurrent neural networks <clears throat> then after that we see that uh, although this uh, has so many applications but this has some rnn has some drawback also what is the drawback drawback is the vanishing gradient so uh, gradient vanishing gradient means suppose you are you have closed your eyes and you are asking for directions the game is there he says left 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 you are trying to hit your target and he says go left 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 the other person says go right okay go front that came it is like that so you uh, you have limited information but you are trying to gain some insight using that information so that is the problem with recurrent ne uh, neural networks uh, lots of mathematics is involved but as a uh, programmer lot of this is already done for you there are so many libraries like scikit learn which abstracts away all the maths you just have to have a brief idea what the maths is going when it will fail basically here it will fail fails when the partial derivative tends to zero during you must have done this during your maths on maths 2 first year but here you don't have to the computer does all the maths for you see so it makes it lot of the calculation already simple for you all you have to keep in mind are the limitations when to use which model and what are the limitations that you have to keep in mind now long short term memory networks see what lstm is first see the short term you need some context so in the short term which were the three previous words which were the five previous words before you type this word based on that can you predict the next word that is short term that is the problem with rnn after some level the predictions become garbage because the gradient tends to zero so long short term memory uh, keeps some larger number of previous inputs in the memory but it does not feed it to the model immediately it only feeds the short term last five words last three words to the model and whenever you want to make a sharp prediction between two competing outputs then that long memory the long which is stored in the memory that is used for that uh, one disadvantage is that it requires the storing in the memory so memory cells are required you have to provide them so that increases the size of the model if you are storing the previous results 100th previous input in the memory so that increases the size of the model so uh, th this does not work very well when uh, the data size becomes so large so that is one drawback of lstms then we move on to cnn convolutional convolutional neural network are used when you have sensory data so images videos when you have to gain insights from them uh, you go with cnn now the uh, what convolution basically means we will see that suppose you have a uh, 3 by 3 pixels okay you use a sliding window approach you have a big image you only see the 3 by 3 grid starting from the top left then you move one skip one row move to the next row then move to the next row and you take the averages of uh, so there are very not always averages you can take the mean, mean you can use the cosine distance so many things uh, and you, in the starting you won't know which one uh, will provide the 
optimum result so in that case you can use grid approach basically you try out see computation is relatively cheap now you can try out three four approaches on your own computer find uh, the one which provides reliable result and then go for that method that algorithm on a high, high performance processor like a tpu or gpu so this is uh, one method this works best for visual sensory data and it can be used for feature extraction means this is the given image in that can you detect the face are there noise in the background is there a uh, random noise in the background for that you can go with cnn so here we have implemented cnn in our own project in mkcl so if you have a phone uh, network has lost hello hello yes sir yes sir ah okay okay network networking problem yeah mayur uh, kindly see the matter yes yes i am checking sir yeah 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 So just wait for a while. Is the internet connection will be disconnected? Ikkuru ni ikkuru, ikkuru ni ikkuru, ikkuru chala sunda. Awesome. Hello, is the screen visible? Yes, yes. Extremely sorry. Uh, I lost the internet connection on my laptop. So now uh, we will uh, show a brief demo of the implementation of convolution ne neural networks for face detection that we have done at MKCL. So if two faces are detected, ideally uh, it should show an error. We have implemented this uh, in our Recruit Live platform. It is not still on production, but what it does is uh, scans the applicant's face. And if there is another person in the background, then it shows an error. So this time, uh, we are, for this we have used SSD model. SSD, uh, uh, other models have we have also tried. So most of these models are pre-trained and they are available from the TensorFlow Hub and uh, other platforms. Then there is Hugging Face. There are so many uh, platforms where other people have trained the, their models and they are making it available to you. So what you do is you take the model, you just uh, replace the top layer with your own data. So suppose you, you have very particular uh, the, data which you want to generate output on. So you use the same model. So these models are very expensive to train. So whenever uh, other model is available in the market, you first check if uh, for your use case, there is some model. Then uh, if retraining rights are there, if that model is open source, then you re retrain the last layer.
Anyone was able to uh, replicate the result on your own device? The QR code was shared. You can type this link also. So this we have implemented completely on the client side. So that means in the browser. So uh, it is possible that on a slow browser, it takes a while to load. Maybe that is the same reason why uh, it didn't work. My net got disconnected. Screen share nahi hai. Ha, is karto. Now here you have to also see browser compatibility because this is a web app. Uh, the Chrome browser saves the recorded video. So what we are doing is recording the video uh, and then uploading to the CDN. CDN means Content Delivery Network where we can gain additional insights from the video. So for KYC verification, basically we are recording a 15 minute clip of the applicant, but uh, Chrome provides us the video in MKV format, matryoshka.mkv format, whereas uh, Firefox gives us in WebM format. That is good for mobile. It works nicely on uh, Firefox on mobile, but it provides us uh, challenges on the back end when uh, analyzing that video, our model has to be trained separately for the WebM format as well as for the MKV format. So these are the some of the challenges when you uh, start unrelated challenges. I mean, this is not a problem with AIML or our model, but it is the basic browser compatibility issue. These are the some of the unexpected challenges, roadblocks, which you will face while implementing. Just wait for a while. He is joining for his laptop. Hello, I have joined. Now we saw some of the challenges. I will share the PPT with you if you want to try it out yourself uh, later. Now we will continue with our uh, regular presentation. This was the fun activity. Uh, if you can, I'm keeping it uh, on the screen for a second. You can save the link or scan the code later. Uh, we will move forward for now. Is, uh, it, is it okay? Have you saved the link? Okay. Now that was a supervised learning approach, which we saw earlier. That is random forest, decision trees. Those were supervised learning. Now we will take a look at unsupervised machine learning uh, algorithms. Now we will start with the rules based system. It is the simplest ML approach. It still comes in artificial intelligence. But all you do is specify rules. If this happens, then that. There is not much intelligence involved there. Uh, it, uh, then clustering and peer groups. So there are uh, k-means clustering algorithm. 
k means so it takes the means and for every new data point which you insert it tries to classify it into these predefined groups then there is segmenting analysis so uh, when the data points are discontinuous you can use the k means clustering algorithm but if it is continuous then you have to go with the segmenting approach now why use this when uh, you are looking for very small insight but the data is enormous that is finding a needle in a haystack in that case a clustering and peer group analysis can be done one example real life is that uh, you find out your friends in 10th standard the probability is that your marks that is the 10 percentage will uh, be very close to the marks of your peer group so from these real life examples these clustering algorithms are implemented so uh, that is uh, time series moving on we will see time series analysis so can anyone give me an example of time series data you can see one graph here that is a sample graph where do you see such data in real life can anyone give me an example okay see it is written here only you can give any so like this data is in the stock market it is continuous data you have price quotes for every time interval every uh, on continuous intervals of time uh, after time you have a quote quote that is what is the price this you can use another one is weather data a meteorological department continuously monitors the weather and records the data from which it makes prediction whether it will rain whether it will be sunny or not this is another example then another is server uptime suppose uh, you are hosting your website but there also you can use ai ml to predict server uptime server uptime is uh, out of uh, what is the percentage when your website was available to the user so just now we saw the model failed to load in time and it was crashing the browser so that is one failure so by providing more resources automatically when such uh, data uh, failures occur you can increase the uptime of your servers but those you won't know until you have uh, various systems and checks such ai systems in check in place to check whether the server is up or not there are commercial versions also but those are expensive such as cloudflare which use such technology to see that uh, there are not any malicious attacks whether uh, and the server is up so now we uh, made a request to the website but it was a genuine request but there are people malicious actors sometimes there are state actors also such as iran north korea for us it is pakistan which constantly sends uh, uh, ddos attacks that is uh, distributed denial of service attacks on our government websites so can we automate the process of checking for each request each new request that comes in whether it is malicious or genuine if genuine show him the website give him access otherwise stop it in the first place only so that our server doesn't get overloaded so these were the the applications of unsupervised approaches so unsupervised approaches are basically plug and play you set the system and then you take your weekend off this is my favorite uh, uh, part which is natural language processing natural language processing means speed recognition comes in that machine translation also sentiment analysis is another part so just by a written text which contains no expressions uh, no voice intonation can you predict what was the intent what was the sentiment with which that sentence was written that is the part of the sentiment analysis so uh, here you have to understand the meaning but not just the meaning but the emotion which with which that sentence was spoken 
this is one application uh, in the beginning i give you an uh, example about yeah. sending cash commands to your bank now there are some companies which are actually working on that like persistent ai pelican ai sorry what they do is take your sentences input then they do ner ner means named entity recognition you said send 5000 rupees to mayur sir so mayur sir is the named entity which is extracted then you say from which bank account you have three four bank accounts you want to send it from this bank account so extract that there are also open source libraries in python nltk is if you are looking from a research perspective you can use the nltk natural language toolkit library if you are working uh, on it from an industry perspective then go for spacey library so such applications are there where you can use it for surveillance uh, our mobile data so uh, now from now try has announced that it will show the name of the person as per kyc documents who is calling you so you won't need true caller anymore so for that this can be used to enable surveillance that someone is threatening someone can we detect it without compromising the privacy of everybody else one party is threatening another party so we can we use it to uh, provide uh, prevent crimes that is one way then online chatbots is very popular application especially for students they like to work on this then you can use uh, voice commands these are the industry applications basically especially in the government which is forensic examinations can they be automated then there is you can do a project uh, where you can classify emails into whether it is a spam unsolicited email or whether the receiver actually wanted that email you can do that you can do that for sms messages also then you can classify tweets whether it is a fake news or real news based on your data set you can classify tweets whether that was a fake tweet or uh, coming from a, uh, a genuine person or it was from a bot account that you can do these are the projects which people do on college level so then this is a more advanced application <coughs> google provides apis but those are not free so you can research on your own uh, this is very uh, close to signal processing also you take the signal you plot the signal uh, you can then distinguish whether the sound is the uh, signal is coming from a sitar or from a guitar that binary classification you, you can do then you can uh, do is based on the quality how low you can make the quality of the mp3 file and still give reliable predictions that is one thing you can work on then as quality improves how much does it the, the predictions improve do they improve proportionally in a linear way do they improve exponentially means you double the quality of the mp3 file but the predictions give a much higher exponential or a cubic growth in prediction after some time it tapers off no new improvement is made for every subsequent improvement in audio quality so then you can make a cost benefit analysis this is the optimal quality this is the optimal file size and still you are getting reliable predictions that is the analysis you can do when converting voice to text then this is machine translation so the challenge is still up there don't think that just because google translate is there uh, all uh, solutions are available so many indian languages today spoken languages even sanskrit uh, has no option uh, to be translated in google translate or machine translation so there is still scope for you to make your own mark make your own contribution here so now we will see little bit about deep learning so some of it is actual new technologies been introduced and some is rebranding rebranding means same thing is being sold under new hype so that you will buyer beware basically so when you uh, So 
so due to uh, time constraints we will uh, hurry up a little bit so here you this is due diligence have to be done by you whether something is genuine or just somebody is trying to sell you an expensive solution uh, many things can be done by both machine learning as well as deep learning and sometimes the improvement is marginal so that call you have to make so now these are we will quickly see the uh, challenges faced so the same things are the opportunities basically if you uh, read this so we have huge amounts of data but that is not uh, readily fixed uh, you can not provide it readily to the model you have to do a lot of data cleaning that is grunt work that takes time so th that is the roadblock that uh, opportunity is that you can automate a lot of things and provide single customer view basically single customer views means you can uh, pin uh, pinpoint to a single customer that what are his interests what are his drawbacks then the co corresponding concern is privacy then there uh, there is the data inputted is not of good quality means data cleaning is one part but the user has in entered some garbage value you cannot uh, predict re reliably on that so these are the some uh, challenges and opportunities there are see counterparts every coin has two sides that same challenges and opportunities in another realm so this was a brief uh, introduction we have covered a lot of topics we have not gone in depth so uh, i will just uh, conclude here and hand over to mayur sir uh you can tra transfer to joha parker sir joha parker sir program manager uh, for the next yes hello good afternoon yes joha sir good afternoon sir you can you can continue sir okay yeah, then afterwards we'll take question answer vedan sir you stay uh, you stay there sir okay we'll yes, sir. yeah 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 okay vedan can you please stop sharing then i can share yes the sharing is stopping so hello all good afternoon i would be very quick in my presentation firstly i'll introduce myself i am zeb parker uh, program manager in mkcl since last 4 years and uh, by education i am a mechanical engineer and i have done mba after mechanical engineering uh, i would take a moment to introduce our company that is mkcl so we are promoted by the department of higher and technical education government of maharashtra india then as uh, pramod sir rightly introduced us that we are most renowned for a product that is msciit so in a, it is the most sought after course in maharashtra uh, right after 10th beat after 10th or in any holiday season our presence is in india that is uh, in india there are various states that are maharashtra in pune sea woods navi mumbai then in bihar assam we have our joint ventures uh, in haryana in odisha also in rajasthan then international presence we are also located in uh, in saudi arabia as well as egypt so overall Uh, in the last 20 years uh, since our existence so we have already achieved that we have trained 1.5 crore plus smart users okay so i'll go a little back i'll switch to hindi so 2020 exactly kya hua tha 2020 if you all remember it was the year of corona corona pandemic so what happened education moved on to being online so ye education se kya hua ke firstly sare schools colleges and the practical experience with it gone for almost 2 years so it what it resulted in that is 
एक ह्यूज गैप आया बिकॉज द स्टूडेंट्स इन दैट वन टू टू इयर्स दे ओनली कंज्यूम थियोरी नॉलेज नो प्रैक्टिकल नॉलेज नथिंग बट इफ वी लुक ऑन टू द ब्राइटर साइड इट वॉज एक्सपेक्टेड इट वॉज एक्सपेक्टेड दैट द जॉब्स इन द मार्केट शुड हैव गॉन बट इफ यू सी द सॉफ्टवेयर डेवलपमेंट साइकिल एंड द सॉफ्टवेयर डेवलपमेंट जॉब्स हैव बूस्टेड इन द ग्लोबली ऑल्सो ऑल्सो इन इंडिया सो इफ वी लुक इन टू डिजिटल टैलेंट स्पेस सो टोटल टेक टैलेंट पूल एज ऑफ ईयर ईयर बाई ईयर वी हैव फोर्टी सेवन टू फिफ्टी टू लैक इन टैलेंट पूल दैट वी आर इंजीनियर्स ग्रेजुएट एंड आई एम नॉट टॉकिंग ओनली अबाउट कंप्यूटर इंजीनियरिंग मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग वी आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट होल टैलेंट दैट इज इंजीनियरिंग हो या एम सी ए मास्टर इन कंप्यूटर एप्लीकेशन हो मास्टर ऑफ साइंस इन कंप्यूटर साइंस हो मैकेनिकल इंजीनियर्स हो इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन इंजीनियर्स हो बट द द जॉब्स इन द मार्केट आर टू मच लाइक देर इज अ सप्लाई गैप ऑफ ट्वेंटी वन पॉइंट वन परसेंट एंड इफ दिस कंटिन्यूज बाई टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी सिक्स दैट इज इन नेक्स्ट फाइव ईयर्स Uh, india will face a shortage of almost 14 to 19 lakh techies so if we look at the statistics india produces nine uh, around 15 lakh engineering students per year but a very sad fact that only 2.5 lakh of those succeed in getting jobs in the core engineering industry so when i am speaking about right now i'll be speaking on ke how this corona has given a rise in software development jobs and more specifically if i go to full stack engineering jobs so what is full stack engineer firstly so full stack engineers are the engineers who develop the front end uh, front end technologies back end technologies web website designing these are the few roles which they go so they are uh, expert in uh, developing a whole application on its own be it from right from back end to front end to web site designing to app development so since 2015 this uh, growth rate of this roles have increased from third uh, of more than 35% every year and this has also uh, this percent has also increased in this uh, pandemic phase so what uh, when i speak in india so out of the stem graduates that is uh, science technical engineering and mathematics students graduates every year only 35% are employable see yahan mein employable ki baat kar raha hu aisa nahi hai ki jobs nahi hai market mein jobs hai but there is a huge skill gap in the market and ye skill gap right now the companies focus on skill not on uh, the degree or your education because as a matter of fact um, more than 20 to 30% in a software uh, employees in a software engineering company are mechanical engineering students when i speak to you as of this moment and when you are speaking of all the jobs available in the market only 35% have the skills to get that job the remaining 65% need to do further course like you aap mein se bhi bahut logon ne aisa socha rahega ki आफ्टर इंजीनियरिंग या तो मैं मास्टर्स करूंगा या तो ये स्पेसिफिक कोर्स करूंगा कोर्स एक्स कोर्स वाई ऐसा समथिंग तो ऐसा बहुत सारे लोग अलग अलग फील्ड में जाके देन दे गेट प्लेस्ड तो ये जो 65 परसेंट है दे रिक्वायर बिकॉज मीन्स दिस कोरोना पैंडेमिक लर्निंग फ्रॉम होम देन नो प्रैक्टिकल एक्सपीरियंस सो ये स्किल गैप बहुत यूज हो गया है इंडिया में तो दिस सिक्सटी ऑफ द होल पॉपुलेशन ऑफ Uh, stem graduates they require further upskilling so this is the gap analysis which i am speaking about ke organizations in india are struggling hard for skilled it workforce uh, actually the job market is flooded with skilled it jobs but the students are uh, facing difficulty in getting that desirable skills also this youth in india are struggling to get the right skills required for that right jobs which are available in the market so for that i would be introducing our uh, product that is diploma in new and 
exponential technology in full stack development track so what is diploma in new and exponential technologies i would firstly this course uh, diploma in new and exponential technologies shortly it is called dnext so dnext is a six month full time diploma for all the dynamic candidates who aspire to work on latest technologies and on challenging projects so when uh, a student enrolls for this uh, diploma he will be undergoing a rigorous training on various uh, disruptive technologies and while they are learning they are also given challenging assignments to perform and uh, they will be getting live project experience in the organization itself that uh, that live projects will be from mkcl itself under the guidance of various industry experts in the company so our plan to upskill this uh, students this 65% students who have this skill gap so firstly we will be uh, teaching them theory there will be more than 240 hours of theory sessions classroom sessions that will be uh, focused on the theory aspect of the all the technologies the uh, technologies i have co uh, covered in upcoming slides so, uh, as much as classroom they will be getting the lab sessions where they can work uh, practically on it and lab uh, they will be working practically on it and they will be performing various assignments and tasks given to them secondly they will be uh, getting live projects to work on and this live projects will be all on the latest technologies in the market and following which at the end of the 6 months when they are undergoing everything uh, theory assignments live projects they'll be uh, getting a huge experience of various technologies in which after the live projects after 6 months they will be providing placement assistance in which they uh, uh, will be uh, giving them bringing companies for uh, so that they can interview and get jobs in the market uh, as a matter of fact we are already in process of uh, various uh, batches uh, of uh, dnext and uh, uh, right now all all of them all the dnext apply, applied candidates in the past batches have been placed then the course details as i said this is the syllabus or these are the technologies covered id visual studio git then ui ux ui ux is nothing but website designing that is html css bootstrap then programming languages python java javascript the exponential technologies golang vuejs these are the latest technologies in market whose demand is going to go up for uh, next 5 to 6 years more then uh, database technologies sql these are the back end technologies mysql mongodb then introduction to cloud computing with aws sdlc software development life cycle and agile methodology also along with the technologies uh, that the uh, react js also we are with this technologies we will be providing a uh, soft skills uh, soft skills communication freelancing uh, sessions every week in order to groom themselves to upskill to uh, how to prepare for interview how to get the presentation skills which uh, how to nail the interview how to uh, uh, improve your communication everything will be uh, upskilled uh, through every week the presentation skills decision making problem solving how to uh, conflict management in a team how to um, uh, manage a team लोकेशन एंड कैपेसिटी ऑफ दिस courses uh, we have 50 seats in seawoods navi mumbai and in 40 seats in pune the, these both are at our office itself where they'll be learning as well as uh, going undergoing the uh, live project and training the fees for the course is rupees 150000 uh, many of you would be uh, questioning that this is too high but uh, believe me that our competitors or the similar courses have a huge more than 2 lakh fees uh, when you look into it and 
we also cover various technologies as compared to other focus on either back end or front end not the whole technologies additionally we also give a laptop a developer grade laptop worth 60 50 to 60000 rupees on permanent basis to the students that we don't take back at the end of the course the, uh, the laptop is on permanent basis to the student so this is about the fees uh, the various job profiles of the after uh, the course beat any engineer mechanical software uh, computer then intro instrumentation civil any engineer is uh, applicable for this course and uh, at the end of the course they will be applicable for these job profiles in the market that is product engineer these are few listed down full stack developer software engineer java developer so those who uh, want to go in it industry or software industry are uh, suited for this course so our dnx alumni the uh, previous batches have already been placed and are working in the following technologies uh, in the following company they are already uh, placed in these companies so the way ahead if anyone is interested in the next batch starts in jan 2023 online applications have already started there will be an entrance test after the online application and once they are shortlisted in the entrance test uh, they can uh, get final admission in the course they can confirm the admission by paying the fees so this is the link uh, dnx.mkcl.org uh, all the students can go at this link there is a video of our alumni who had already uh, of our pr previous alumni who have already been placed at other companies there are also list of all the details or at the website you can watch the video as, as well of the alumni speaking these are the contact numbers if uh, you anyone needs for further queries in future thank you thank you sir uh, thank you vedant any queries participants any queries you can you can directly ask what do you sir any query sir your mic is muted i think tukaram has a query he has enabled the mic okay tukaram you can ask the question no no i don't know i don't think so continue to hod sir if there are no queries uh, we can go for vote of thanks yes sure you can uh, proceed uh, professor pramod okay so now i request uh, professor balbir to propose vote of thanks balbir sir yes thank you so much sir uh, i am professor balbir uh, i would like to uh, thank mr vedant madane uh, the project associate of mkcl sir it was a very enlightening uh, session and uh, we thank you very much for motivating the students actually uh, this is a bus which can which cannot be missed the bus will eventually catch up with the students yeah, without artificial intelligence there is no way out uh, we thank you very much uh, we thank mr joheb parker program manager from uh, mkcl thank you so much uh, sir uh, for this wonderful session uh, i thank uh, our uh, principal dr zj khan uh for always uh, being there in support and i thank our hod dr pravin for uh, dukhe sir uh, he has been instrumental and uh, a guiding force always uh, to arrange all these uh, these kinds of these kind of program especially the software part he has been uh, very pushy about that and that is 
uh, very necessary for the uh, boys and the girls. And I thank Professor uh, Sahari, the coordinator of this uh, program, Professor Pramod Sahari, uh, for uh, making such huge efforts and coordinating all this. I thank all the uh, faculty who have participated in the program. Uh, all the students, uh, I wish them very good luck. And uh, it was very nice having you with us in the program. Your participation encourages us to hold such programs. I thank all the supporting staff and good luck to the students. With the permission of uh, HOD, sir, I would like to end the program. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Balbir. And uh, I I think uh, the program has con been concluded. Mayur, sir, shall we end the program? Yes, sir. We can go ahead with this. Uh, I thank all the staff of your college for providing us opportunity to have this program. Uh, we would look, look forward for the more such programs with our senior team members yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, yes. uh, our faculty were requesting uh, Savan, sir. Suppose uh, if you connect with Vivek Savan, sir, uh, then it will yes, be very yes. good for our entire college. We will plan out. Uh, yes. The, our Deshmukh, sir, uh, he was very enthusiastic regarding that uh, Savan, sir, if uh, he personally come to our college to grace. Uh, so that will be good. So you you uh, give a word. We'll put your request Savan, to sir. our yeah. general manager, Anupam yeah, yeah. sir, yeah. for having a session with the Savan, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Sir, uh, yes. shall we stop, sir? Yes, yes. Sure, okay. sure. Okay. okay, sure. Bye. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye.